Well, I'm still on my Cooper high. Unfortunately, there's not a uh, there's not a Wikipedia page dedicated to Hoopers, but Hoopers were the ones that put the ring on the hoop on the barrel to keep it together. I don't know if they're also the ones that lined the uh, cracks the cracks in the barrel between the staves, um, and I also don't know if they're involved with the smithing that actually manufactures the hoop. I th- yeah. I wish I could find more information about that on Wikipedia. I'm sure I could find it in their Botanica or something. But alas, now I want to learn more about barrels. And man, this is a long article. So we're doing barrels. A barrel or cask is a hollow cylindrical container with a bulging center longer than it is wide. They're traditionally made of wooden staves and are... Sorry. And bound by wooden or metal hoops. The word vat is often used for a large container, for large containers, for liquids, usually alcoholic beverages. A small barrel or cask is known as a keg. Modern wooden barrels for winemaking are made of French common oak, Kerkis Robur. What's that look like? Pretty leaf. Uh, also, white oak, Kerkis Petrea. American white oak, Caracas alba. Sorry if you are into um, flora and I am butchering the name. Uh, and more exotic is Mizunara oak. Mizunara, Mizunara, whatever, Japanese. All typically have standard sizes. Recently, Oregon oak, Caracas garyana, has been used. Um, so we have different sizes here are Bordeaux type which is 225 liters, or 59 U.S. gallons, Bordeaux type. And that's from a region in France, the Bordeaux region. Burgundy type, which is 228 liters, 60 gallons, U.S. Cognac type, which is 300 liters, or 79 U.S. gallons. So Bordeaux, 59, Burgundy, 60, Cognac, 79. And those are U.S. gallons. Who uses imperial gallons? I don't actually know. Oh, well. Modern barrels and casks can also be made of aluminum, stainless steel, and different types of plastic, such as HDP. What does that stand for again? Oh, right. High-density polyethylene, which is uh, stuff that... Can that be recycled? I don't remember. Anyway, we've got a lot to read. Someone who makes barrels is called a barrel maker or cooper. Coopers also make buckets, vats, tubs, butter churns, hogsheads, firkins, kegs, killerkins, tearsons, rundlets, punchins, pipes, tons, butts, pins, troughs, and breakers. Watch the Cooper article or video for more on that. Barrels have a variety of uses, including storage of liquids such as water, oil, and alcohol. They are also employed to hold maturing beverages such as wine, cognac, armagnac, armagnac, Sherry, port, whiskey, beer, arak. How is that? Arak, eric? Sorry, I don't know my alcohol. And sake. Other commodities once stored in wooden casks include gunpowder, meat, fish, paint, honey, nails, and tallow. Tallow, rendered form of beef or mutton suet. Sweet? Swood? Whatever. Sorry. Early casks were bound with wooden hoops, and in the 19th century, these were gradually replaced by metal hoops that were stronger. Pardon me, I'm burping. That were stronger, stronger, more durable, and took up less space. So, in the 1800s, they moved to um, metal. Metal hoops. The term barrel can also refer to roughly cylindrical containers or drums made of modern materials like plastic, steel, or aluminum. The barrel has also been used as a standard size of measure, referring to a set capacity or weight of a given commodity. For example, in the UK, a barrel of beer refers to a quantity of 36 imperial gallons. That must be where they use imperial gallons. Okay. Um, So a barrel of beer, 36 imp gallons, 160 liters, 43 US gallons. Wine was shipped in barrels of 119 liters, 31 US gallons. That's wine. Um, wine shipped in barrels of 31 gallons, man. A barrel of oil defined as 42 U.S. gallons 
is still used as a measure of volume for oil, although oil is no longer shipped in barrels. The barrel has also come into use as a generic term for a wooden cask of any size. Um, history. An Egyptian wall painting in the tomb of Hesira, we read about this in the Cooper article, uh, this painting in that tomb, dating to 2600 BC, shows a wooden tub made of staves bound together with wooden hoops and used to measure wheat. Another Egyptian tomb painting dating to 1900 BC shows a cooper and tubs made of staves in use at the grape harvest. Palm wood casks were also reported in use in ancient Babylon. In Europe, buckets and casks dating to 200 BC have been found preserved in the mud of lake villages. A lake village near Glastonbury dating to the late Iron Age has yielded one complete tub and a number of wooden staves. This is a lot of just the uh, history from the Cooper article. The Roman historian Pliny the Elder reports... I'm going to go a little fast through this, by the way, since it is a repeat. Uh, Pliny the Elder reports that Cooperage in Europe originated with the Gauls and Alpine villages, where they stored their beverages in wooden casks bound with hoops. Pliny identified three different types of coops, or, coopers. rather, Ordinary coopers, wine coopers, and coopers who made large casks. Large casks contain more and bigger staves and are correspondingly more difficult to assemble. Roman coopers tended to be independent tradesmen passing their skills on to their sons. The Greek geographer Strabo records that wooden pithoi barrels, uh, pithoi or barrels were lined with pitch to stop leakage and preserve the wine. Barrels were sometimes used for military purposes. Julius Caesar used catapults to hurl burning bar barrels of tar into towns under siege to start fires. The Romans also used empty barrels to make pontoon bridges to cross rivers. Empty casks were used to line the walls of, shell of shallow wells from at least Roman times. Such casks were found in 1897 during archaeological excavation in Britain of Rome's Silchester. They were made of pyrene silver, py pyrenean silver fur and the staves were 38 millimeters or one and a half inches thick and featured grooves where the heads met. Uh, sorry, heads fitted. Don't know where I put that word in from. They had Roman numerals scratched on the surface of each stave to help with reassembly, just like Ikea furniture. In Anglo-Saxon Britain, wooden barrels were used to store ale, butter, honey, and mead. Drinking containers were also made from small staves of oak, yew, or pine. These items required considerable craftsmanship to hold liquids and might be bound with finely worked precious metals. They were highly valued items and were sometimes buried with the dead as grave goods. Churns, buckets, and tubs made from staves have been excavated from peat bogs and lake villages in Europe. A large keg and a bucket were found in the Viking Gokstad ship, excavated near Olsenfjord in 1880. Time to look at pictures. Traditional oak barrels made by Chilean cooperage Tonelería Nacional. Look at those nice-looking barrels. They do really kind of look nice. Mm. I admire that craftsmanship. Yeah, so I guess this is riveted together. Maybe that, yeah, it's not an actual full hoop. It's just in the shape of a hoop. I, I don't know. In my head, I didn't know if it was a continuous band um, that they just forged together or whatever. But no, it looks like it's a strap and they riveted. <clears throat> Castle Rock Brewery. Here we've got modern stainless steel casks and kegs outside the Castle Rock Microbrewery in Nottingham, England. Nottingham. Wooden wine barrel at an exhibition in Croatia. Ooh. Yeah, he's got it right here. Oh, I live in Croatia. I have pretty paintings behind me. Cool, cool, cool. And pyramidal pile of herring barrels in Shaven... Wait. Shaveningen... Scheveningen, Scheveningen, the Netherlands, 1940. That's a lot of barrels. Uh, I don't think we're onto this yet. Wine barrels in Napa Valley, Valley, California, USA. A country. Uses today. Beverage maturing. An aging barrel is used to age wine. Distilled spirits such as whiskey, brandy, or rum, beer, Tabasco sauce, mm, didn't know that, or in smaller sizes, traditional balsamic vinegar. When a wine or spirit ages in a barrel, small amounts of oxygen are introduced as the barrel lets some air in, compared to 
microoxygenation, where oxygen is deliberately added. Oxygen enters a barrel, sorry, enters a barrel when water or alcohol is lost due to evaporation, a portion known as the angel's share. Cute. Angel's share is the water or alcohol lost due to evaporation in aging barrels. In an environment with 100% relative humidity, very little water evaporates, and so most of the loss al- most sorry most uh, most of the loss is alcohol. A useful trick if one has a wine with very high proof. Most beverages are topped up from other barrels to prevent significant oxidation. Although others, such as Vignon, Vignon, I don't know my alcohol. Sorry, uh, Vine Down and <laughs> and Sherry are not. I wonder why. Oh well. Beverages aged in wooden barrels take on some of the compounds in the barrel, such as vanillin and wood tannins. Tannins. Huh. The presence. Let me let me see how that is pronounced real quick. Tannins, commonly referred to as tannic acid. Okay, tannin. Pronunciation, please. Oh, that's not. Oh, that's British tannins. Okay, tannins. Gotcha. Cool. Great. Um, tannins, vanillin, and wood tannins. Um, which so these are the compounds of the barrel. Vanillin, organic compound with the molecular form formula. Carbon-8, hydrogen-8, oxygen-3, I don't know chemistry. It is a phenolic aldehyde. Phenolic aldehyde. Its functional groups groups include aldehyde, hydroxyl, and ether. It is is a primary component of the extract of the vanilla bean. So it is similarly named vanilla. And wood tannins, the phenolic content in wine refers to the phenolic compounds, natural phenol and polyphenols uh, in wine, which include a large group of several hundred chemical compounds that affect the taste, color, and mouthfeel of wine. Okay, cool. So beverages aged in wooden barrels take on the compounds of the barrel, like vanillin and wood tannins. Did I pronounce it right? Tannins, tannins? Oh, shoot, I forget already. Anyway, moving on. The presence of these compounds depends on many factors, including the place of origin, how the staves were cut and dried, and the degree of toast applied during manufacture. Barrels used for aging are typically made of French or American oak, but chestnut and redwood are also used. Some Asian beverages, like sake, I uh, use Japanese cedar, which imparts an unusual minty piney flavor. In Peru and Chile, a grape dis- distillate named pisco is either aged in oak or in earthenware. Earthenware. Ooh, terracotta. Wines. So that was, okay, that was general. Wines. Some wines are fermented on barrel, as opposed to in a neutral container like steel or wine grade, HDPE, high-density polyethylene, tanks. Wine can also be fermented in large wooden tanks, which, when open to the atmosphere, are called open tops. Other wooden cooperage for storing wines and spirits range from smaller barriques barriques, to huge casks with either elliptical or round heads. The tastes yielded by French and American species of oak are slightly different, with, with French oak being subtler, while American oak gives stronger aromas. To retain the desired measure of oak influence, a winery will replace a certain percentage of its barrels every year, although this can vary from 5 to 100%. Some winemakers use 200% new oak, where the wine is put into new oak barrels twice during the aging process. Bulk wines are sometimes more cheaply flavored by soaking in oak chips, or adding commercial oak flavoring instead of being aged in a barrel because of the much lower cost. Sherry. Sherry is stored in 600 liter or 160 US gallon casks made of North American oak, which is slightly more porous than French or Spanish oak. The casks or butts are filled 5 6 full, leaving the 
sorry, leaving, quote, the space of two fifths empty at the top to allow floor to develop on top of the wine, which floor in winemaking is a film of yeast on the surface of wine, important in the manufacture of some styles of sherry. It is formed naturally under certain winemaking conditions from indigenous yeasts found in the region of Andalusia in southern Spain. Cool. Um, sherry is also commonly swapped between barrels of different ages, a process that is known as solera. Cool. Whoopsie, I accidentally clicked that. Spirits. Whiskey. Laws in several jurisdictions require that whiskey be aged in wooden barrels. Man, laws require that. Okay. The law in the United States requires that straight whiskey, with the exception of corn whiskey, must be stored for at least two years in new charred oak containers. Other forms of whiskey aged in used barrels cannot be called straight. International law requires any whiskey bearing the label scotch to be distilled and matured in Scotland for a minimum of three years and one day in oak casks. By Canadian law, Canadian whiskies must be aged in small wood for not less than three years, and small wood is defined as a wood barrel not exceeding 700 liters or 180 U.S. gallon capacity. Interesting. Since the U.S. law requires the use of new barrels for several popular types of whiskey, which is not typically considered necessary elsewhere, whiskey made elsewhere is usually aged in used barrels that previously contained American whiskey, usually bourbon whiskey. The typical bourbon barrel is 53 U.S. gallons, or 200 liters, in size, which is thus the de facto standard whiskey barrel size worldwide. Some distillers transfer their whiskey into different barrels to finish or add qualities to the final product. These finishing barrels frequently aged a different spirit, such as rum or wine. Other distillers, particularly those producing scotch, often disassemble five used bourbon barrels and reassemble them into four casks with different barrel ends for aging scotch, creating a type of cask referred to as a hogshead. 